Hey everybody, I thought we'd take a break from the usual tutorials and do something a lot more fun. Because recently I started experimenting with these new AI art generators, and I've been blown away by what's possible. And yes, I realize there's some controversy regarding them. I also understand that there's artists out there who can actually do this on their own, which is remarkable. But my whole point today is that if you're like me and you don't have that artistic talent, and you still want to create something fun on those cloudy nights, this might be well worth your time. What you'll need to do is start off by going to Google and typing in mid-journey, and then going through the sign-up process. I had to pay about 10 bucks a month to be able to access the servers, and then you also need to create a Discord account. I've never used Discord though, so that was kind of confusing learning the ins and outs of that. But anyway, once you get everything configured, you should be able to find this mid-journey AI thing right here. Then what you want to do is look for one of the newcomer rooms over here on the left. Assuming you have a subscription with the mid-journey, then what you're going to do, the easiest way actually, is to right-click on the mid-journey bot here and then send it a message because otherwise your stuff's going to be mixed in with all this random crap right here. Once you've sent a private message, you're going to be in your own interface right like this. Now here's one way we can do this. We'll type the backslash in the message thing down here and then we'll type in imagine. That's what brings up the prompt. We'll click on the prompt there and now you're free to enter whatever you want to. But if you've already done some astrophotography, then you can always find your photos if you've uploaded them to a website and then choose the ones that you think are going to work best. Either the Horsehead Nebula, maybe Veil. I don't know. Let's see. Maybe I'll start with Rosette. So I'll copy that link and then I'll paste it here at the beginning of the prompt. I can do one nebula or I can do multiple nebula. Maybe I'll do the Veil as well. So I'll put a space, paste that link in and I'll do the Jellyfish too. What the heck? So I've now given the AI three of my own photos that it can experiment with and understand what I'm trying to do. Then from here, I need to enter some keywords. And there's tons of videos out there that will explain how to pick the best keywords. I've only been using this for a few hours, so I'm not the best person to ask. But it seems like if I put in colorful, nebula, deep space or something, I don't know. That's probably good enough, honestly. Let's give it a try. I'll type in astro photography. All right, so I've given it three of my own photos, a few keywords. I'm also going to put in this command right here, which is hyphen hyphen AR 16 by 9. That way it gives me some photos I can actually use in the video today. Then I'll click on enter. It's going to send that over. And now we just sit back and wait. And while that's running, let's take a look at some of the photos that I captured earlier. For example, We've got these grids here. It starts off by doing this by default. And you can look at the grid and find one photo or more that really look cool to you. In my case, I thought number two and three in particular were very interesting. So then I could click on U2 and U3. Basically what that means is it's going to cut out those particular photos and generate them separately like you see here. Then I can click on that photo, choose open in browser, and now I have the full res photo. I can then right click and save it anywhere on my computer. We'll get more into this here in a few minutes, but that's basically how this mid journey thing works. Like I said, it's kind of confusing at first, especially if you're not used to this kind of thing like me, but we're just about done. There we go. So here we have four completely brand new images and let's take a look. They're pretty interesting. You can definitely see some of the vibes of the Rosette Nebula in particular. Out of all these though, I kind of like number two and four the best, I would say. So what I can do now that I found my photos is first of all, I could save this as a new image just so I have it. And I've got a folder here called AI art. We'll save this in the original grid. All right, so getting back on track here, if I really like any of these, I can choose the corresponding number. So we've got U1, two, three, and four. I like two and four the best, but if I don't like any of them, I can always click on the little refresh here and it will try the whole thing again using slightly different parameters. Or if I really like number three or four, but it still needs some tweaking, the V will give you a slight variant. Anyway, I'm gonna click on three and four. What that will do is it will pull them out of the grid and give me a high resolution version of it. And then we'll take a look. And in fact, I meant to do number two as well. I screwed that one up. 
But let's say number one, I like it, but it could be a bit different. I'll click on V1. All right, hopefully that made sense, but basically I'm gonna be cropping out two, three, and four and creating a slight variant for number one. When those are finished, it'll appear right here. I should also mention that the amount of photos you can do depends on the subscription level that you get. I'm paying them like 10 bucks a month, so I think I get about 200 of these per month. So this would count as one, then it'd be two, three, four, and five. So you can see you can go through a lot of photos very quickly just by experimenting with. That's one of the downsides of this subscription model. It'd be kind of cool if you could do it locally on your own computer, but maybe that'll be something in the future that will be available. While these are running, let's take a look at something else. So these are the actual photos from Mid Journey. And you might notice the resolution is kind of small here. That doesn't really fill the frame. And if I zoom in, it just kind of falls apart. It's very pixelated. This is another downside with the current AI technology is that it doesn't give you a very high quality photo, unfortunately. Thankfully, we have a workaround called Gigapixel AI from Topaz. Gigapixel AI is something I just started messing around with today as well. I did the free trial and it worked so good I just ended up buying it immediately. The only caveat I have is that Gigapixel AI is very computer intensive and it might even crash this recording. We'll find out. But I'm going to load up Gigapixel AI and we'll take a look. Alright, so I've loaded up Gigapixel AI. I'll click on Browse Images and I'll just start with one of my single low res photos, maybe this guy right here. And the way it works is I recommend you do the art and CG option because this is computer generated. Do the automated settings here. And if you have face recovery or something, turn that off. That's really all I've had to do. Then you can choose the amount of upscaling, either two times four or six. I think six is a good option for Mid Journey AI. And then last but not least, you can choose your zoom ratio up top here. I'll back it off a bit. And when I do that, you can see the image on the left is the original. The image on the right is after Gigapixel AI. And in fact, I will zoom in here to show you how this works. Notice on the left, it's just very, very pixelated and low res. On the right, it's just amazing. You can see all these cool little filaments and things. Whereas before, it was just really not much to look at. And that's the really cool thing is now we're using multiple AI technologies to create something that never even existed 10 minutes ago. One of the few problems I have noticed though is that it tends to make some really weird diffraction patterns like you see here. That's through Mid Journey mainly. So you gotta watch out for that, but still, it's pretty remarkable just how well this looks. I'll do a few overlays here to show you the before and after. Assuming that Gigapixel AI did a nice job, and in this case it really did do an awesome job, I'll click on Save Image down here. Then I could put this in a particular folder, change the file name, and then hit Save. And when I do that, I can close out of Gigapixel AI, and we'll be done for that right now. Alright, so let's go back to Discord. It looks like it finished up, and yeah, here we go. So it stripped this photo out. Create a whole new one. We'll open that up in our browser. I'm going to save this as a new image right there. Then I'll go down to the next one. We'll click on it, open in browser, save it. You can already see just how much fun this is going to be for you if you're looking for something to do on the weekends or whatever else you might want to do. Now that I've got these new photos, we'll do the same thing. We'll go to Gigapixel AI. And when you get the settings figured out, you can always select multiple images at once, like these guys right here I have. I'll open them all up. Stick with the default settings in this case, a six times scale. Art and CG. The automatic settings is fine. And then I'll click on save three images. And if we do our before and after here, you can see it's just adding a whole ton of new detail. Sometimes it looks kind of weird, but overall, it's definitely a big improvement from the original. When Gigapixel is finished with your three photos or whatever, you can click on remove all and then start over again. And then from here, if I still want to play around with this, I can go back to the message bot here. Again, we type in backslash imagine. That brings up the prompt here. And if I did 
the, I think it was the Vale, Orion, and Rosette, whatever it was. Maybe I can do now the Andromeda Galaxy and the Veil Nebula and the Horse Head. And so I can add these as a whole new prompt right here. So I'll paste in the Horse Head. I'll paste in maybe the Veil. And I'll do the same thing. Colorful, Nebula, Space, Astro. Then we do the, I think it's hyphen hyphen, AR, 16 by 9 so we get the nice resolution for the video and then we'll click on enter and it's got a whole new prompt now that's going to go through and do you get the idea i just want to show you this really fun new tool that i've been experimenting with today and you might be thinking well that's cool and all but why would i even bother and to that i would just say well you know if you got a lot of cloudy nights and you haven't been able to shoot this is a fun new thing you can try and you're going to create something that nobody's ever seen before so let's check this one out here this is with horse head and veil I mean, these are just amazing. All right, we covered just about everything I wanted to today. I showed you how to use this mid-journey AI and also incorporate your own photos into the algorithm. And using this tool, we're able to create some really spectacular works of art that for a lot of us would never be possible otherwise. And at the very least, this will make it easier for me to create thumbnails for my YouTube videos because I'm notoriously bad at that. So if you're getting tired of those cloudy nights or you just want something else to try, I'd recommend you give this a shot. Don't forget about the Gigapixel AI to increase the quality of the final image and be sure to check out some of those tutorials on how to actually use the Midjourney bot because it is kind of overwhelming at first. But that's all I've got for you today and I'll see you guys in another video.